All right, today we're going to talk about simple machines, things that make our lives easier. All right, so first we need to understand the concept of work scientifically. Scientifically, work is when you apply a force to something and that thing, that object, moves in the direction of the force you apply. So it has to actually move in the direction of the force for work to have been done. Uh, the force and emotion must be in the same direction for work to occur. So if the car does not move, then although he may be straining, he may be exerting energy, no work will have been done unless the car moves in the direction of the force. All right, so what is a machine? A machine allows us to do work easier. It helps to transfer our energy or our work over a different distance, a different direction, or it may magnify our force in some way. Some machines, we call them simple machines, are not complex like uh, electronics or things like that. They are very, that's right, simple. Okay, so once again, these machines make work easier by changing the amount of force you exert, the distance over which you exert that force, or the direction in which you exert that force. So machines are making work easier on us in these ways. Okay, they're changing the force of the distance of our force, of our energy. So we have, if you have a machine, you have an input force and you have an output force. Obviously the input is the force that you put in and the output is the force that uh, comes out the machine, essentially. Uh, the machine does the output, you do the input. So here we have, you know, he's inputting the force here uh, and the machine is helping to change the direction of his force and the distance that he has to apply that force right allowing him to do it more easily uh, and here they're turning the wheel multiple people inputting force and that force is obviously changing the direction somewhere else allowing them to do it easier uh, so let's talk about uh, some machines the force is multiplied so the output is greater than the input force right so if uh, the work stays the same um, then a decrease in force must mean an increase in distance, right? If you look at our formula here, if the amount of work stays the same, then you have a force distance trade-off, right? If the force stays the same, if work stays the same and the force goes down, the distance must go up, right? If work stays the same and distance goes down, then the amount of force must go up, okay? These are inverse operations because here we are multiplying them together giving us work so they are uh, they are in an inverse relationship right so if machine allows you to do less use less force then less force means a greater distance right less force means a greater distance and vice versa so you want to take a piano up to the second floor I don't know why you'd want to do that but uh, you've clearly helped someone move that you should not have helped move. So if we take that piano and we just go straight up, right, it takes a lot of force to just go straight up. However, if we go up a ramp, then we're exerting less force over a greater distance, allowing us to travel more easily where we want to go. Our pulley does a similar operation right much greater distance here so we are allowed to use less force uh, some machines the output is less than the input force sometimes the output is less than the input it doesn't sound like you want to do that but you know sometimes you do because you are exerting an input force over a shorter distance and uh, the machine is extending that for you so you get to apply a shorter distance and to do that, you must, once again, have a greater force. Shorter distance equals a greater force, right? Just like this racket here. I'm applying my shorter distance here 
where I'm applying my force and the racket, its length is multiplying that force over a greater distance. I do have to input greater force than what I get out, but I get that force over a greater distance. It's always a trade-off. Like a hockey player, here we go. See, I'm exerting my, he's exerting his force right here in this small area over a smaller distance, but it's extending that force over a greater distance so he can hit the puck. Same thing with a fan. When you wave a fan, you use a small uh, area, small distance, and then the fan multiplies that distance and gives you a greater wind. Uh, and sometimes the force changes the direction, or a machine changes the direction of our force, uh, as in here, clearly a flagpole. Um, we are, or same concept here with the sails on a boat. Instead of me having to go all the way up here and pull it up there with me, I get to apply my force over this short distance right here, and the flagpole changes the distance and the direction of the force, it changes specifically the direction, because I'm pulling down and the flag is going up, right? makes it easier. Rather than me having to climb up there, the machine makes it easier by changing the direction of my force. So machines make things easier for us in multiple, multiple ways. Once again, a machine is a device. It makes work easier by changing the size of the direction of a force. Obviously a hammer changes. We apply a force in a small direction. It transfers it somewhere else. Ramps make it easier on us to move upwards levers like scissors apply a greater they magnify the force and then here we have a wheel and axle that allows us to change the direction of the force right machines don't reduce the work they only change the size of the direction that's a trade-off the force distance trade-off the force or the distance can increase but not at the same time so a machine can increase the force or it can increase the distance but it cannot do them both to, both together that would be that would change the laws of physics, right? We'd be uh, magnifying our energy, getting more out than we put in, which is, as we know, impossible. Here we have Atlas using his, uh, this is a lever in order to hold up the world, which would make it easier on him. If you've heard the story of Atlas, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, check out your mythology. All right, so let's go through our simple machines. We're going to talk about six kinds of simple machines, and we will start with the lever. The lever is a bar that pivots around a fixed point. We call that fixed point the fulcrum. So here is our fulcrum. This is our lever, and it pivots by moving around that area, that fulcrum. It allows us to change our force. There are three classes of lever that we're going to learn about. This is your first class lever. The fulcrum is between the effort, right, the force that we put in, and the load, whatever work we're trying to get out. So this is our input force, this is our output force, and the fulcrum is in the middle. That is a first class lever. I'm sure you can see very quickly an example of a first class lever from your regular life. That's right, a seesaw. Absolutely. Okay, the second class lever, that is where our output, our load, is in between our input, our effort, and the pivot point, our fulcrum. So we're using this pivot point to help us lift things up. And hopefully you may be able to see an example very quickly of this. That's right, a wheelbarrow. Absolutely. Our wheel here acts as the fulcrum. Our load is in the middle. And we obviously apply the effort here. And a third class lever, the input, our effort, is in between the load and the fulcrum. And this is kind of an odd one. It's a different way to use a lever to apply the effort in the middle and have the load over here and then the pivot point right there. A good example of this is, that's right, your muscles. Okay, your bicep muscle is attached right here. Your arm, the muscle is attached in two different places, here and here, which applies the force right here. You pivot at your elbow right here and then your load is way over here. So our bicep muscle, our elbow, this whole, our arm essentially, is an example of a third class lever. All right, here we go. Same thing here, all right? Chopsticks, another example of a third class lever. Second class and first class. So an incline plane, very simple. It's an incline plane, it's a ramp, that's right. You're changing the distance over which you apply your force.
making it easier for us. Another kind is a wedge. A wedge is incline planes back to back. You can see incline plane. That would be like a ramp over here and then a ramp over here. You put them together, you make a wedge. It helps to move things apart, to separate things. Knives are obviously wedges, as are axes. Right? See, here is a perfect example. This is like an incline plane. You move it in order to split or cut things apart. You get a double incline plane. There's one on this side and one on this side. A screw, very simple. It's an incline plane that's wrapped around in a spiral. You can kind of see how this could be an incline plane wrapped around that screw, and it allows that screw to pull things apart, but at the same time, because of its shape, because of the spiral shape, as it's pulling things apart, it's pulling the screw inward. It does a lot of work for us, right? You can see, right, here's the incline plane, and then you wrap it around causing it to separate things and pull in the screw. Uh, we've all heard of a wheel and axle. Obviously, they're on all kinds of things. Cars, bicycles, motorcycles. Uh, there's a wheel and axle on our pencil sharpener. All kinds of things use the wheel and axle in order to make things go, right? You have your axle here, and then you have your wheel around it. Makes it easier, allows us to transfer our force fasten together so that they rotate together, right? Doorknobs, uh, a screw is part of a wheel and axle, a screwdriver, um, the steering wheel of a car as well as the wheels of a car, just any kind of gear that you see in anything uh, is a wheel and axle. It's very, very helpful. The invention of the wheel, obviously, making our life easier for as long as you can remember. Here's a wheel and axle. These are some gears. Right, obviously a wheel and axle in use, multiple wheels and axles. Uh, here, multiple wheels and axles in order to wrap the rope and transfer more energy. This relates to another kind of simple machine called the pulley. Right, a pulley makes use of a wheel and axle in order to transfer uh, the direction and sometimes the amount of our force. Pulleys. Single fix pulley changes direction of force but doesn't make it easier. Uh, single fix pulley right here is changing the direction but we're still lifting. Still so difficult, right? But a movable pulley changes the direction and it multiplies your force depending on how many pulleys you have. Multiple pulley systems make our forces much, much easier. As you can see here, you're transferring multiple amounts of force, multiplying that force with multiple pulleys, makes our force exponentially greater uh, and uh, so much, so much easier. All right, so we've talked about lots of simple machines, and as I've talked about these simple machines, I've told you several things that have more than one simple machine involved with them. We call these things compound machines. So if something has more than one simple machine, such as the pencil sharpener I told you about, the, I mean, a pair of scissors is a compound machine. This bicycle is obviously a compound machine. Um, there are uh, obviously multiple wheels and axles, um, thereby your, there's a pulley system, a small pulley system, multiple, multiple machines here. Um, that's called a compound machine. A pair of scissors is a compound machine, like I said before, right? The, it's a lever. It's a first-class first, first lever, first of all. Um, but the actual business end, the part of the scissors that cut, that is obviously a wedge. So multiple things we use in our daily lives are compound machines. Multiple simple machines put into use into one item. Once again, there's your scissors. you got your lever right here. It's a first-class lever because your effort is here, your fulcrum is here, your output force is here, and your blade of your scissors a wedge. Same thing here. We're using a lever on a, this is a corkscrew, and you're obviously using a screw because it's a corkscrew, right? Because you can see that incline plane wrapped around there. Uh, we use that to put into the corks of bottles and pull them out. See how many different simple machines you can find in many compound machines in 
a kitchen.